So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I have got Steve Morris with me, who is a professional EOS implementer based now in Baltimore, but originally from New Zealand. Is that right, Steve? Yes. Good morning, Deborah. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Hey, look, I'm really excited to, to hear from you because I know that you're a passionate sailor. Um, and obviously, here in New Zealand, we're very, we're very fond of our sailing, as are the Americans. So tell me a little bit about your story, please, Steve. Well, sure. So um, you can see behind me on the wall up here, this, this white boat, and that's Fisher and Pike on New Zealand. So my first job out of college was working for Grant Dalton on Fisher and Pike back in 1988, 1989. It's a while ago now. But that's how I got started with my whole career. And it's been a really interesting journey. But I can still remember back kind of coming out of engineering school, thinking I was going to be a designer. And then instead, my first job responsibility was getting up in the morning at six o'clock and going to the gym and seeing how much, you know, iron weight we could lift off the floor, <laughs> training <laughs> with the crew and things like that. Okay. And so Grant is a bit of a, um, a, a well-known man over here. What was it like working with him? So Grant's a, a really cool and interesting guy. I mean, I, I still now, you know, follow the news and, you know, I'm, talk to him for a while but keeping in touch with what he's been doing on the news and just you know seeing this person who has this incredible tenacity and perseverance right to, to keep on pushing forward yeah. and that's who he was you know back when I was was working for him and you know he was the skipper on Fisher and Paykel just this drive right to be able to keep continually pushing the team forward having that vision for where we needed to get to go and then, you know, really pulling a team together around that and everything that we needed to do to be able to be successful on that boat. So it was a, it was a wonderful start to my career to be able to work for somebody like that and to be able to see, you know, really what incredible leadership really was. Fantastic. So what would you say is the one thing that st stands out for you in terms of that leadership that you've taken forward into, because you've run your own businesses as well, and you've obviously worked with other people. What have you taken out of that experience into your own business world? Well, you know, that's what I'm, when I saw in Grant is, you know, that tenacity and that perseverance and that, and that ability just to keep on going despite obstacles and despite all of the other things that are, that are coming in. And I, I think there's something about that perseverance that I've kept um, close to myself as well. And, you know, as you know, running a business is not, you know, easy at all, right? And there's always things happening every single day. Um, and particularly in EOS, we talk about, you know, these 136 things that are coming at, you know, business owners every single day. And then just having that perseverance um, to be able to keep moving forward to, to solve those issues, um, to be able to keep um, the company moving forward. Something that I've really um, seen, I've, I've taken that to heart and, and used in my own business. Mm -hmm. So tell me a bit about your own business. Well, so I've, um, so I've had quite an interesting career <laughs> over the last, uh, since I worked for Grant. Um, I actually ended up coming here to the United States and working for Bruce Farr and Russell Bowler at Farr Yacht Design for many years designing America's Cup boats and other, you know, Volvo Ocean race boats. Um, at one stage, you know, Grant was, well, several times, I guess, along through there, Grant was one of um, our clients, yeah. um, as were a lot of other, you know, really incredible driven um, people in business. Um, this model here is uh, Oracle Racing. So Larry Ellison, the um, CEO of Oracle, was one of our clients for many years. So just to be able to work with people like that, to have them as, as our clients and to be in a position where we were kind of, you know, really responding to that. They, they set an incredibly high bar, right? They wanted to win yeah. um, to, you know, because they're already successful in business and then they wanted to bring that success into um, the sailing world and to, to compete and to win. Um, so I really learned a lot about leadership, about bringing together uh, systems and processes, all of the things that we talk about in EOS and bringing together teams to be able to, um, to be able to help our clients be successful. Um, and then after that, I also I spent 10 years uh, becoming a certified uh, project manager and helping the US Navy uh, here in Washington, DC, which is um, near where I am here in Maryland. 
Um, and then I started my own business six years ago, really around this mission and this passion to help people, teams, and businesses get unstuck and sail forward, as I like to say. Nice, nice analogy. I love it. Okay. Yeah. And so you, you're now a, a, a professional EOS implementer. What, what, point, what brought you on that journey? So I was doing a lot of um, leadership team development work with my clients um, in my business and really sort of seeing like I was able to get them sort of so far down the track of becoming more healthy and successful as a team. But then I was sort of re really sort of searching for something um, a little bit deeper um, with a little bit more structure around it. And I was introduced to Traction and EOS and I immediately fell in love because here last I sort of had found these tools that I wished I'd had, um, you know, back when I was in the yacht design days and pulling together teams and running the yacht design business, but also um, to have a framework that had been used. Um, it's, you know, it's a complete proven system of a simple set of practical tools mm -hmm. that have been used in 10,000 businesses. Yeah. Right. So it's there's a lot of um, knowledge. There's a lot of, of, of the, all of the testing and the trialing of that, you know, has been done. And now we have the set of tools that we know that when we apply them in, in the framework that we have and work with our clients and we go on the journey that we go on with our clients, then we will get to success. And I just love that. Yeah. I also love the fact that it is based on, you know, amazing brains around the world and bringing all this kind of knowledge together into something that's very simple. Because I think that as entrepreneurs, we tend to, if things are a little bit too broad, we can get carried away with that. So by really simplifying it down, I think makes a massive difference. Yeah. Okay, so you know you, um, you you talked about how sailing and building boats and things is, is very similar to running a business. Tell me more about how you think um, you know, EOS it, it relates to, to to yachting to business. Just just give me more of your story. I'd really be keen to hear a little bit more about that. Right. So I mean, in, in EOS, we talk about these um, six components that we are working with our business clients to strengthen these six components in the business. Yeah. You know, and the first one is vision, right? And getting everybody in the leadership team on the same page with where you're going and how you're going to get there. And, you know, when we're working in these sailing teams, you know, there's some interesting aspects of that because, you know, the vision, like, where are we going? Well, that's a very defined thing. You know, we're going to win the America's Cup. We're going to win the round the world yacht race, the Volvo race, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but even still, you know, underneath that vision, that's really getting everybody on the same page about how we were going to do that, that um, oftentimes, you know, could be more challenging. And these components that we work on with our clients around establishing core values, right? Like who are we as a team? Um, it's so incredibly important. And I, I, you know, as I look back over my career and as I look back with, with the really successful teams that we worked with um, and other teams that, you know, had resources but weren't so successful, I really sort of see um, that those successful teams were built around this idea of establishing core values and figuring out, like, you know, who we really are as a team um, and then being very deliberate and intentional about how those were used, you know, as the team was put together. Absolutely. Hey, have you have ever seen any sort of challenges around getting people on that same page? Well, yes. And that's, you know, that's, I think the second component that we talk about when we're working with our, our clients is um, people, the people component, right? So of course, you know, the crew on these boats um, and bringing in fact the whole team together, not just the crew, but all the support people um, and us as designers, that was so critical. And, you know, when we work with our EOS um, clients, we, we talk about two components there, right people, right seats, okay? Yep. And so right people are people who share our organizational core values and right seats are people who are really great at their job. Um, and when I look at that, you know, I sort of see, well, when we had these really successful teams um, and perhaps, you know, when we had great resources, like the temptation is to just go and, you know, hire and, and contract the best people that you can find, like the most expensive, the top sailors, let's, let's just get them all, right? Top shelf the whole way. 
Um, but then you get everybody in a room like that. And that's when it's sort of like, it starts getting a little bit, hmm, um, you know, why are these people here? What are their motivations? You know, and if we haven't had that, that conversation and that intentionality around core values, mm -hmm. then um, it didn't work, right? Just sort of getting all of the very best people and putting them in the room doesn't mean that they're going to work together. Um, and the, you know, one of the best campaigns that I still remember um, that I worked with was actually the Ilbrook uh, Around the World campaign. This is way back in 2001, 2002. Um, you know, the skipper John Kostecki was an American. He had Ross Halcrow, who was uh, a Kiwi and one of my crewmates on uh, Fisher and Paykel. Um, they were so intentional about how they built that team. And it really was around this idea of, of core values and who are we as a team and each new person coming onto the team, did they fit? Yeah. Did they fit on the team? Did they fit the culture like a glove? Um, you know, are they really coming in and bonding on the team? And then that, you know, when I'd go sailing with them, um, it, was, it was a very different environment than I had experienced um, oftentimes. And of course, they went and dominated, you know, that edition of the Volvo around the world uh, yacht race and, and won. Yep. So the, the, uh, the proofs in the, <laughs> in the results. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay. So beyond, so obviously, yes, having a strong vision, understanding why you exist, having the same sort of core, that getting some really clear core values and make sure you've got those right people in the right seats doing the right thing is really important. What's next? Well, so the third component that we work on with our clients is data. Right. And so this is, you know, in the business context, we talk about making decisions on facts and figures and objective information. Mm -hmm. It's no different on the boat. <laughs> and, you know, it's sort of, um, I think it's really interesting as I sort of look back, you know, from when I sort of very, um, you know, got started with, with working for Grant, he hired me to be the um, performance ana analyst on, on the boat, to, to have the computers and to be trying to figure out how we were doing in, in getting the boat to, to sail faster. Um, so that data, that having that objective data at the time, um, you know, of course, was incredibly important to be able to figure out, you know, how we were going to do yeah. in the round the world yacht race. And then as I look to now, right, the latest version, you know, edition of the America's Cup and you know, these, these boats have sensors <laughs> from the top of the mast to the bottom of the, the foils, from the, the bow to the, to the stern. Yep. You know, we have companies like Airbus involved, you know, the, the entire thing, like um, the, the, the sensors on board the boat are generating gigabytes and gigabytes of data every time they go out sailing. Um, and so, you know, compared to where, <laughs> compared to where, we were 30 years ago. It's, it's just like, it's, it's a whole, whole new world. Sure. Um, but that data, you know, I feel like there's something about the, you know, the performance there. I mean, we've gone from boats that were sailing, you know, at 10 knots upwind to boats that are sailing at 40, 45 knots upwind, right? And we've, we've, we've gone a you know, 400% increase in speed. And part of that has come from data. Yeah. And I like to sort of, you know, I talk about that increase in performance and, and I like to, to bring that back to that sort of business sense of look what happens when you can reduce all of the drag that's on your business, right? All of the things that are getting in the way and the, you know, the rework and the do-overs and the inefficiencies and all of the stuff that's dragging away on the business, you know, when we've done that in sailing boats, now we're going four times faster. It's amazing. Wouldn't you love to do that in your business too? <laughs> Absolutely. And it's about measuring the right things, isn't it? It's not measuring the ego stuff, but measuring the things that really make a difference. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the vision. We've got the right people. We're measuring the right things. What comes next? Well, so then the fourth component we talk about, of course, is the issues component, because when we get the vision when we get the people we have the data you know now we start having transparency and we're really seeing the obstacles the imperfections mm -hmm. and you know as we work with our clients we're working with our clients to really help them figure out how to solve issues together as a team 
And, you know, when you look at the uh, recent America's Cup, you know, what stands out in my mind is, you know, American magic, right? The, the US challenger, that, that, that fateful jibe they had around the top mark there and got hit by a gust, boats up in the air and then suddenly slam down on its side and gets a hole in it. Now the boat's starting to sink. I mean, what a, what a challenge, what an issue, right? The, now the team's got to come around and, and, and work together to be able to save the boat. And of course, then to also see all of the other challenges coming in and, and um, uh, Team New Zealand as well, to be able to help save this boat and get them um, ready to, to sail again. And they get the boat back to the dock, right? And, and on the hard and inside the, the, the shed. And this, now everybody has to come together to patch the boat and to, you know, uh, to repair it and to be able to get it ready to sail again. And this is really where, you know, if you've put the training in, if you've done the team building, if you've built the trust, all of those things um, now allow, you know, the team to be able to come together to solve issues together, to, to solve them quickly and to have them go away um, instead of having them, you know, some, if you don't have that trust, if you don't have that team building, then things can have the potential to devolve, right? You can get into the finger pointing and the blame and the, you know, complaining. And also not and dealing the, with the real issues, right? Because, I mean, we've seen this with the businesses we work with, sometimes the issue that is presented is not necessarily the real issue. And so having mm. the, um, yeah, the, the healthy team that's prepared to go a bit deeper and sort of actually really solve those issues at the root cause. Yeah, and I, you know, I see this with my, my clients often too it's just sort of like this this thing of you know having meetings and and trying to make decisions but not really being able to be efficient about making decisions having the same things just be repeating over and over and over yeah um you've got to be able to solve those things and i've seen it with the teams that i've worked with the the ones that have the ability to do that yeah off they go yeah okay great so again, we've got vision, we've got the right people, we're measuring the right things, we're, we're solving our issues at the root cause and putting them to bed once and for all. What comes next? So the fifth component we work on is process, right? And this mm -hmm. is about really documenting uh, the things that we do and making sure they're done the right way and the best way every time. And I really feel, you know, at, at Far Yacht Design, this was one of, I think it's sort of like it was our secret sauce. Yes. <laughs> We had a lot of secret sources, but this was a really good one because we were really good at being able to um, figure out our design processes and document them um, so that we were able to then use them, right, to be able to get that consistency. Um, and so, you know, we were able to design boat after boat after boat that was able to win, win, win. Mm -hmm. And because we took everything that we learned and we put it into documenting our processes. And we talk about this, you know, and we work with us with our clients in EOS. Like you can, when you document your processes, then they're done the right way. And that's just a huge relief <laughs> <laughs> yes. to a business owner, right? Yeah. I, so many um, clients and, and, and business owners that I talk to, you know, that they're, they're, they're worried, they're stuck in the business, that they, they, you know, there's, are things going to be done the right way? Or people are always kind of bringing them, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? All of that goes away when you document your processes and get the consistency. And then once you have consistency, then we can scale. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we were able to do that in a design sense as well. Like having the, the, the processes documented now allowed us to be able to do more work. Yep. Um, and I think it was also, I mean, <clears throat> we had a lot of responsibility as designers, designing boats that are out in the middle of the Southern Ocean, thousands of miles away from land. I mean, <laughs> no one's coming to help, right, if something yep. goes wrong. Um, so to be consistent and to make sure that we were designing those boats the right way, um, you know, was incredibly important. And it was a, you know, it's a really essential part of, of what we were doing as designers. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I often find when we start talking about sort of documenting processes, it can be a bit overwhelming for people at first, because if you think about all the things that are involved, um, it, it does feel like it's a huge amount of work. What would you say to that? Well, so that's the taking the approach of simplification, 
And part of the EOS um, model is to simplify and to use what we call the 80-20 approach, right? Document 20% of the steps that get you 80% of the way there. Yep. And when I look at the, you know, the way we used to, to do it in the, in the yacht design, we would have design sheets, you know, a sheet of paper. Start at the top, work your way down, <laughs> yeah. and you get the answer at the bottom. Um, and, you know, that really, you know, just step by step by step, but not to make it overly complicated, but to, to be able to simplify and to get that answer that's really um, close enough to be able to say so that you know you know, what you're supposed to be doing, how you're supposed to be getting the process done. Sure. Okay, great. So we've gone through all of these things and we're now sort of at the sixth component. What's the sixth component? <laughs> Traction. Traction, right? yeah. yeah. This is a great one, yes. And I really see that, you know, when I look back <clears throat> at my career, I just sort of think about, um, you know, I think about those times when we had great vision, working with clients that had great vision, and then really about like, you know, that the, the separator um, about around success, which is being able to bring the vision down to the ground and to get traction, right? Mm -hmm. And so what does that really mean? That, that really talks about, you know, being able to like get everybody on the same page, but then having established your vision, like what are you actually going to be doing um, say for the next year, you know, if you've mm -hmm. got a, a longer campaign and then establishing that and then what are you going to do for the next 90 days to really be able to focus on your priorities? Um, and then what are you doing coming together as a team to be able to, um, to meet, to be able to solve issues, to be able to exchange information, you know, on a, on a weekly cadence? And, you know, seeing you know, those successful teams that we worked with really had that ability to be able to come together um, to make sure that we were meeting to be able to exchange information to get, you know, the right stuff uh, worked on within the team um, on a good cadence to be able to, you know, be able to get traction on achieving yeah. our vision. Um, yeah, so I, you know, when I, as I sort of the work that I'm doing with with EOS now, I can look back over my career and see those points where, you know, the successful teams um, were applying some of those um, principles, if not all of them, um, at various stages in their campaigns. Sure, that makes perfect sense. So tell me, so in terms of you know, I, when I talk to people about EOS, it often feels very, very simple. And they say, if it's that simple, you know, it can't possibly work. How would you respond to that? Well, there is a simplicity to it, um, but it's a framework, right? And, and, you know, as an engineer and a project manager, I mean, I'm a systems guy and this is what I've done my entire career. This is how, you know, we can design boats that go, you know, go sailing around the world. This is how we can design boats that fly above the surface of the water yep. um, by taking something that is complex and simplifying it, right? But it doesn't mean that it becomes something that, you know, you know, my four-year-old could do or something like that in crayon, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it just means that we've been able to, um, to, to take something that's that's complex and to be able to separate it down and, and put it into a framework and to be able to work through a system uh, to be able to achieve success. Yeah. And so and I think it's know, about that focus, isn't it? It brings focus and it also brings that whole less is more. If everything's important, nothing's important. So by focusing on what's important, we actually get the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me just in terms of your, your career, both in EOS and, and in your business and the yacht, what's been sort of your biggest, um, you know, professional best and personal best in that, that time, do you think? Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> um, so I really think, you know, looking back at, um, I, I think looking back at some of the campaigns that I worked on um, back in the yacht design days, things like the, the Ilbrook Around the World campaign was, um, you know, I've got a lot of sort of special memories about being able, being involved with that team and things that we we're able to achieve. Um, also Oracle Racing, I mean, that was another yeah. um, big time in my career, um, being able, having a lot of responsibility about how we were pulling that design together and the things that we were doing. 
with that. Um, I really look back on those, you know, with sort of like a lot of sense of achievement about how we were able to move the um, our capabilities forward in terms of what we're able to design and what we're able to achieve working together with teams. Yeah. Um, on a sort of more personal level, more recently um, in my business, I've been working with all sorts of teams and, and educating people and teaching people and um, being involved actually also with a lot of kids, um, helping them learn engineering skills. And um, there's a couple of girls in engineering school here in the US that wouldn't have been in engineering school if they hadn't been involved in some of the programs that, that I'd been running. And um, that's something I'm kind of happy about and that's proud of awesome. because... Yeah. Um, we need more women engineers in this world. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> cool. So for our listeners, we like to always give them some practical tips that they can take away. So I really appreciate you sharing, you know, your, your, your yachting analogy. I think it's absolutely fantastic. What were the three key things you would recommend people should look at doing to improve their business, to get a better life? Yeah. So the number one thing I start working on um, with my clients is actually um self-regulation and self-control. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, so it's an interesting thing, right? So as leaders and managers, we are helping, metab are helping all of our people metabolize their stress. Like everybody's bringing their problems to us as a leader. Mm -hmm. So we have to help everybody working through their stress, but all of that ends up on our shoulders as a leader. So um, we have to be able to deal with that, right? We have to be able to be calm in the middle of chaos, to be able to, to do these things, um, to be able to simplify, to delegate, to be able to predict all of, all of the skills that we teach our, our clients. And so as part of that, I, you know, no one ever taught me this, this concept, you know, when I, <laughs> earlier on in my career, but there's things that you can do to be able to manage your stress, um, and part of that is to sort of have some knowledge about what goes on inside you um, in terms of things that trigger you, you know, to be aware of these sorts of things. Um, and then to also, you know, what I um, work on with some of my clients is, you know, to be aware of when you're getting triggered, then there's things that you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of those things is to engage with the breath, because our breath is the remote control for our nervous system. Yep. right and our physiology and our psychology are not separate so all of these things are sort of all bound up together there so i'm just starting off the first thing is just engage with your breath and when things are getting chaotic just feel your breath and start getting back in touch with where you are so that's you know, it's 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 not part of the EOS curriculum <laughs> no no but it's it's certainly um it, you know it's part of being a better person, which leads to being, yeah, better leader. Yeah, a better leader. I mean, it's sort of like if, what's that phrase? I'm, I'm not going to get it right, but it's sort of like if everyone are around you is losing their heads and, you know, you can't remember the rest of it now. But I, Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't either, so I can't help you out there, I'm afraid. Okay, so that's the first one. So self-regulation um, and yep. then um, self-control. So number two. Well, so number two is, you know, the things that we do work on with our clients in EOS, which is really around people, right? I mean, being able to surround yourself with, with getting the right people. I think that that's so incredibly important because it really, you can't achieve great things without having great people, yeah. right? Um, so I think that that's sort of like the second thing is to really start looking at who you're bringing onto the team and your relationships with them and building that trust getting everybody um, on board with heading in the right direction. Perfect. So that's number two. And the last one? The last one, well, I'm a systems guy, so it's, you know, yep. get a process in place, right? You know, this is the project manager and the engineer and me, so anytime we've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Bring a system or process in here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's put a process in place. Let's get a system in place to be able to solve this. Um, and I really believe that. And sometimes, though, you know, some of the issues that we're dealing with are what people call soft issues, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, which are not soft issues at all. You know, they're the hard things to deal with. How do you have a conversation with somebody 
um, you know, a difficult conversation with somebody? How do you hold people accountable? Um, How do you work with your team around things like stress and burnout? Um, These are not easy things, but we do actually have processes and systems that we can put in place to be able to have conversations, to be able to um, really get on the same page with everybody in our organization about where we're going and how we're going to get there. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, and I think, you know, you talk about system and a, and a process. I mean, in, in reality, EOS is an operating system. It's part of that bringing that system into your business, which is what I think we both love about yes. EOS. So, yeah. Okay, great. Hey, Steve, we're just about running out of time. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me this morning. I don't know what time it is over there at the moment. I'm assuming it's later in the afternoon, uh, is it? It's quarter to six in the evening here. In the evening. Yep. Okay, well, look, I appreciate you giving us your time. Uh, if people want to get in contact with you, so your business is called Catalator. What's the best way for them to get in contact with you, Steve? Um, probably through email, steve at catalator.com. Yep. Um, there's also my website at, of course, cat- catalator.com. And I'm on LinkedIn at Stephen A. Morris. Email fantastic. Email. Hey, look, thank you so much for your time. Really, really love the yachting analogies. I think it's fantastic. So thank you for sharing that. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah. Well, thanks, Deborah. It's been a great conversation. And I certainly hope that some of the yachting stories can help down in New Zealand, spread the word, spread the uh, uh, idea that, you know, EOS, it, it really is this complete proven system. And I, I love working with my clients on it. I love the feelings of relief and the, oh yes, exhilaration. We've got a plan in place. We're going to get there. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much.